Hey folks, today we're gonna show how to make your Raspberry Pi 5 much faster. But we are also going to talk about classic PCs. If you have a classic PC, you can, for example, replace the main processor and put in a compatible but much faster processor with more cores. And of course, uh, you can replace the graphics card. But uh, these two are not possible with the Raspberry Pi 5. But what is possible is to mount a much faster data drive. Usually it is SD card. Uh, we have different kinds of SD cards and it's very important when you are buying the SD card that you buy the SD card that supports fast data transfer modes. To speed up even more, you can use SSD drive that is connected through a PCIe port. Why is this important? Because a system on chip PCM2712 can communicate directly to your SSD drive through M.2 interface. This is a standard interface. But of course, to do this, you need an interface card because the connector that is placed on the Raspberry Pi PCB uh, is much smaller. And so you need an extension card and appropriate cable. Nowadays, this extension card seems to be available and this would probably be the greatest speed up because this way you simply avoid RP1 chip. RP1 chip is intended to communicate with slower devices like Ethernet port, uh, USB 2.0 and 3.0 uh, ports and all the other devices that can connect through the expansion port and of course also Wi-Fi. RP1 processor has got the fastest PCIe connection to the BCM2712. It's four lane, so it can do 20 gigabits per second. This is still five giga transactions per second, but because it's four lanes, it's four times this. With PCIe port that you can connect the external SSD drive, it must be said that it is only one lane, so it's just five gigabits per second. The same speed can be achieved through USB 3.0 ports. Raspberry Pi has made it clear that they have mounted two USB controllers so you can transfer five gigabits simultaneously from each of the 3.0 USB ports. But still, to do so, if you have an SSD drive, uh, you first need an SSD drive with a controller. Usually this is CATA controller. And this controller has then to connect to an interface controller that is able to connect CATA to USB and then you have this RP1 so you have three intermediate controllers that actually relay your request to access usually a short file and this takes time to avoid this you can use an extension board but of course with an extension board you might also introduce cooling problems if you are intending to overclock your Raspberry Pi 5 at the same time it might be a good idea to mount SSD drive extension card sideways. What we can do with this? We can load games faster and so on. Let's talk about overclocking Raspberry Pi 5. Is it worth it? I would say no. I've overclocked my Raspberry Pi 5 to 3 GHz and 1 GHz for GPU. It seemed to be working but it was a little bit unstable from the beginning. I first set all the gouges so I was able to see CPU frequency and uh, also CPU temperature and of course also CPU load. I was not stressing CPU too much because I have only a fan uh, without any kind of uh, cooling rips so uh, I could also speed up the fan and I could use uh, 12 volts to run the fan but I saw actually no use to doing it I just wanted to see whether overclocking worked when uh, processor was cool enough so at first when I booted the computer crashed Actually, it booted to the operating system and then installed. And uh, the second uh, booting was successful. I was able to open LibreOffice Writer with no problems. It worked perfectly. But uh, I have, of course, a bad feeling that uh, such a configuration 
in various cases might be unstable, so I don't recommend uh, overclocking Raspberry Pi 5. Why? Because by overclocking it, if we calculate the speed up factor, it's uh, 3.0 over 2.4, and this is 20%. This is a speed up of 0.2. I would say this is not much because if we compare this speed up to the speed up of Raspberry Pi 5 related to Raspberry Pi 4, we would see that it's about 2.3. Raspberry Pi 5 has a different architecture than Raspberry Pi 4, and despite that Raspberry Pi 4 can run at 1.5 GHz and also at 1.8 GHz, the newer versions, it's actually much slower. Some have managed to uh, overclock Raspberry Pi 4 to 2.2 GHz, but still it's not comparable to Raspberry Pi 5. It's much, much slower, at least two times slower. And this is what counts. And if you mount a faster disk, if you mount a faster SSD drive, this usually spares a lot more speed up. And, uh, of course, if you have programs that require a lot of random access memory, a lot of RAM, this means that your Raspberry Pi 5 it would greatly benefit from having 8 GB of RAM instead of 4. But you have to think about this before you are buying it. That's it for today. Press subscribe and like button if you've liked today's talk. The next video is coming soon. Bye.